Fresh and fit are at it again. What did they say this time? Well, fit said the white man is public enemy number one. Let's get into it. Welcome to Escaping the Echo Chamber. So now if you're a fresh and fit supporter, what I'm not gonna do this time, what I'm gonna try not to do this time is to rail on fresh and fit. I'm gonna talk about what they said and I'm gonna dispute it and I'm gonna back it up with facts and evidence because my contention is that the stuff they said are just hyperbole and talking points that are backed by nothing. So let's talk about what they said. So in addition to saying the, in support of his claim that white man is public enemy number one, Fit decides to start saying that there's a double standard is as it relates to treatment of black people and treatment of white people or non-white people and white people. And he starts providing some examples. He says, oh, you could say black power, but if you say white power, it's racist, but black power is good. And what that does is that ignores logic, reason, history, and reality. Because here's the thing. When he makes that statement without looking at the context. What's context? Context is that thing that you want to look at every time we see a video of a black person being brutalized by a police officer. That's what context is. So let's look at the context of this. Black power, the words black power and the words white power did not just come out of nowhere. They are not from similar movements. They are attached to actual movements that existed in history. So if we look at these movements, we see why one is looked at differently than the other. White power was in relation to people, groups like the KKK, which was created to stop black people from being able to thrive. Black people were out of slavery and the KKK decided that if the government wasn't going to oppress people, if the government was going to allow black people to exist as human beings, they were going to do what they could to stop black people from thriving and succeeding. So they engaged in a constant campaign of terror, of trying to harass, oppress, murder, torture, and brutalize black people. Many of KKK members were in law enforcement and many KKK activities had the support or the negligence, the neutrality of law enforcement. White power was a statement made not to empower white people because white people were already in power. It was a statement made to maintain an unequal and quite evil system of oppression. White power was a statement made in support of excluding non-white people from power. Black power was a statement made 50s, 60s, when black people are being still being brutalized, still dealing with racist laws, Jim Crow laws, miscegenation laws, anti-miscegenation anti-miscegenation laws, which stopped for interracial marriage and stuff like that. And so black people, the black power was about black people feeling whole, black people acknowledging our humanity, accepting our humanity, asserting our humanity as equals, as equals. See, so white power was about power over others. Black power was about power with others. There's the difference. That's why those two are not co comparable. And if you don't believe me, by all means, look up the origins of each word, of each slogan. He also said that BLM is a terrorist organization. Now, if you look at, there's the movement, which is just about, hey, if something happens, an extrajudicial act of violence happens against a black person, the movement activates the sentiment is there the hashtag exists but you have the black lives matter global network foundation which if you want to say that patrice colors is a fraud i'm not going to argue with you if you want to say that she's shady i'm not going to argue with you if you want to say that she's using 
that that organization to enrich herself and her family members, I'm not going to argue with you. But there is a far cry from saying she's just a charlatan to saying she's a terrorist. She has taken money and given it to groups that are involved in LGBT issues, has engaged in providing grants to organizations along that lines because that was her stated goal. That was the stated goal of BLM. They used the issue of police brutality against black people as a way to, <laughs> to serve LGBT issues. But if you take a look at other BLM organizations, like here in New York, we've got BLM of Greater New York with that's run by Hawk Newsom, and Hawk is actively involved in the community. Just earlier this week, he was in Harlem doing an event in the community. They, they regularly will, will show up to issues, even having discussions with, with politicians on where policy needs to be going. In addition, Hawk was down there at the, at the Barclay Center protesting against the jab mandates. So no, BLM is not a terrorist organization. And if you had evidence to support that, then you should probably turn it over to the proper, proper authorities. There is no evidence because that's just a hyperbolic statement that is supported by no facts. He says that you can be racist to white people, but if you say anything to a non-white person, oh, then you're a racist. Once again, that is not supported by facts or evidence. There are many people who have been fired for saying things against white people. There are many people, in fact, just a couple of weeks ago, there are the teenage girls, black girls, who were alleged to have made anti-white comments and assaulted a white woman on a bus, and they have been charged with hate crimes. So there is absolutely no factual support for this lie, for this myth that, oh, the government ignores racism against white people. And you know why it doesn't even make sense? Because the government is run by white people. Congress is 77%, let, let me say it again, the United States Congress is 77% white people. 77%. Fortune 500, non-whites are, I, I think, are single digits. Non-whites are single digits of top executives in the Fortune 500. These are statements, the statements that these guys are making are just, they're just pulling them out of thin air and there's nothing to support them. But what's crazy is that they will say in the same breath as playing this victimhood game on behalf of white men, will say to everybody else, we'll say to black men, stop playing the victim. Meanwhile, they're setting up this white victimhood narrative for white men. Oh, you poor baby. You, you only control 77% of, of Congress. You only are in control of 490 of the Fortune 500 companies. You own, only, like see, this is, like there's a, there's a pathology at work here. And the pathology is that, and, and there's, because the, this statement goes, America has become so used to oppressing others that equality now feels like oppression to them. So yeah, so so it's it's talking about how you've got a group of people that have for so long dominated everybody else that when the playing field is being evened, it now feels like oppression to them. Despite the fact that if you look at the if you take an objective look at the data and information, you'd be like, no, 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 this, this is things equally. This is things equalizing. But you've had it your way and not through legitimate means for so long that you don't know what equality feels like. That's why you have people that are pushing this great white replacement theory because what do they want to remain? Do they want, they want America to be equally <laughs> distributed among the races? No. They want the whites to remain the majority. Wait a minute, but I thought this is about equality. The whole purpose behind this, this great white replacement theory is that they are the majority and they want to maintain their majority. You can't tell me this is about equality 
when you're trying to maintain a majority because it's not just the majority in numbers you're trying to maintain. It's a majority in power. It's a majority in representation. It's a majority in, in wealth. So none of this, none of their complaints on behalf of white people are based on oppression against white people. They're based on things being, things starting to equalize or things being less, less unbalanced. And you've got some white people that are up in arms about it because they're so used to oppression. They're so used to things being so unnaturally skewed in their favor. Because even in the statement, he says that this, this targeting is starting with Caucasian men. Once again, let's just, let, let's just take a look at the prison population. Let's just take a look at the prison population. If we take a look at the prison population, we'll see that the majority is, haha, black men. Despite the fact that black men are not the majority in this country. Hmm. Funny how that works. Of course, the, the go-to saying is, well, black people are committing more crime. Uh, no. Black people are being investigated more. Black people are being under, are being scrutinized more. Black people are being punished more. And, and quite frankly, you know what? Activity that black people commit is being, activity that black people engage in is being criminalized more. That would be a more accurate statement. If you made that statement, I would go with that. If you say that activity that black people engage in is being criminalized more, okay, because the whole vacancy laws of, of people standing around, that was made to target black people. The law was made to target groups of black people standing around, just, just shooting the shit. That's, that's what the law is about. So right now they're talking about, just last week you had Trump talking about bringing back stop and frisk. The funny thing is people say, but hey, if, if black people didn't want to be in jail, obey the law. Okay. When you take a look at Donald Trump, oh, if Donald Trump doesn't want to get searched by the FBI, obey the law. That's not the tack they're taking. You see, so there is a double standard. The double standard, though, isn't being applied in favor of black people. Let's get that straight. The double standard that exists is always, always has been and continues to be in favor of white people. And more, more, than, more often than any, white men. Because you take Donald Trump, who is, was, who is alleged to have been in, in possession of, of government documents. Correction. He admits he was in, in, he admits he's in possession of government documents. The question is whether they're classified or not, but they're government documents. He's not in the government anymore. You're, you're a private citizen now. Give those governments back to the government. Give those documents back to the government. And yet he's going to whine and cry. And all of these people are going to whine and cry on his behalf, despite the fact that he was in possession of materials that was not his. And they're going to say, oh, that's, that's, un that's so wrong. This, this is politicized. The government shouldn't be doing this to, to, to the former president of the United States. If he's violating the law, if he has something he shouldn't have, then yeah, they subpoenaed him. He didn't produce all of the materials, and so now they came and got it. But those same people will have no problem with cops stopping young black men on the street and frisking them for no reason whatsoever, no warrant. They don't even need a warrant for that. So stop and frisk is cool, but searching, the, the pres searching Donald Trump, who was in possession of government documents, isn't. So don't tell me you will apply standards equally about obeying the law because you're not you don't and you won't and if you want to find some more information about this i recommend this book new jim crow now it's a book that talks about mass incarceration it's a really good read to just get an understanding of how despite the fact that the law claims to be colorblind the outcome is anything but and if you're interested in buying the book, you can, there's a link in the description that you can click on to buy it. And as an Amazon affiliate, if you buy the book from that link, I will get a small commission. So if you agree with me and you think that Fresh and Fit don't know what they're talking about and 
they they need to, they need to start learning some history. Feel free to give me a thumbs up, like, share, subscribe if you have not subscribed already. But if you disagree with me, if you think I'm wrong, then go ahead and give me the thumbs down and tell me, what do you know about Jim Crow, the black codes, redlining, and the destructions of Black Wall Street? Tell me what you know about any of those things and how they affected the black experience. And if you would like to check out another video I did on Fresh and Fit, you can click on the screen right now.